Hey guys, it's Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what are the steps that you need to take between being someone that's kind of a vest pocket dealer and then becoming a little bit more well known in your area. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting video. I hope you guys enjoy it. So everybody that is a coin dealer one day really wants to move into getting a shop and then maybe getting a storefront. And in this video, we try, we're trying to talk a little bit about and get the ball rolling and asking certain questions that would spark your interest and get you started in your journey to open a shop one day. We talked to Black Eagle Coins on Instagram. If you guys want to follow him, he's a cool guy, posts a lot of great coins. But we talked to him about his shop and what he's doing to hopefully make it a storefront one day. Uh, the cool thing that about numismatics and about bullion is that you don't really have to have a physical location at, at first, but over time when you start to want to get more clients and more people to know your name, it's really good to have your name out there. And so the cool thing that David did from Black Eagle Coins is that he didn't actually have what he wanted in terms of reach to open a storefront. But he actually opened an office instead and that allows for a lot more kind of leniency in terms of how much he has to pay per month but there are a lot of new challenges a lot of questions that we have to ask ourselves um, before we get into even an office space so let's read exactly what uh, david talked to us about and then we're going to ask some questions to you if you are starting or wanting to start a coin shop <music> So me and Casey have been wanting to hopefully one of these days move into an office space so we can serve our local community, not just people online. And this is kind of how the conversation started out with David. Quick question, David, has it been fruitful with your office? Might try and set up one near us. And then he wrote back to us the question uh, you have to ask yourself is, are you cool with dealing in bullion? Because 90% of any walk-ins you are going to uh, you know, be running into people with bullion and they're not going to be really numismatic guys. Um, dealing with bullion can tie up a lot of cash. I know it does for me, but it's a great, uh, it's great for word of mouth. I know I've heard people sell me coins based on referrals of people and have sold bullion too. So the first thing that he's kind of saying is that, are you willing to, uh, kind of change and mix up what you're offering to people that are local and online? Because you only really have a certain amount of capital when you're trying to sell coins and sell bullion, right? If I only have $50,000 and he's recommending that you probably should have a lot of your money tied up in bullion just in case you run into those customers in your office, are you willing to do so? And also another thing that we're gonna be talking about a little bit more is that what's your coin to bullion ratio? If you're in Florida, uh, for example, that's gonna be a mainly coin concentrated place with some bullion. But if you're in Houston, or if you're in the middle of a rural city and you don't really know what to, uh, you know, what to sell, I think bullion is going to be your best bet. So make sure you're checking what ratio is important for you, especially when you're wanting to open up an office space. Because if I'm selling coins online, people all over the nation that are interested in coins are going to be looking for me. They're not going to be looking for bullion. But if people are near you and are willing to spend half a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars on bullion. Most of the time that'll be ended up, end up being building your business um, locally. Hey guys, I'm gonna take a quick break in this video. If you guys are enjoying today's video, please leave a like, comment your thoughts about uh, kind of what stage of the game are you at? Are you a vest pocket dealer or are you, do you have an office or do you want a storefront? What's going on with you? We would love to hear from you. Uh, subscribe if you're new and we have uh, the Freedom Coin Show podcast has been doing pretty well. We have it on Spotify and on YouTube. If you guys want to check that out, we have a link down below for that. And here's a little clip um, from kind of a cool story that we had last week. All right, so what are we testing, Casey? Well, I went to a garage sale this weekend, and I bought two ounces of gold without a tester. Genius. I would recommend that to anyone. And Blake has been generous enough to let us test it with his device. Oh, pure. Love that pure right there. Love you, Casey. Didn't doubt it for a second, baby. Didn't doubt you. Pure. Didn't go. doubt you for a second. So sweet. But 
He went on to say, he said, bullion isn't fun because of the super slim margins and the amount of cash it ties up uh, to have that qu quantity on hand. To me, it's not really even a drawback, but it is definitely a change from how I used to do things before I got an office. So exactly what we just said before. Also being an incorporated business and following industry regulations is a lot different than having a little vest pocket side hustle. The IRS and state reporting requirements for people that sell coins um, as a legit business. But I'm sure you already know that. Long story short, the, the office more than paid for itself has been a positive for me. So a few things that he addressed here that really kind of made me think and reflect. Um, what kind of regulations, what kind of licenses do you need in your area? Those are questions you should be asking yourself when you go to uh, move into an office space. Another thing is, um, like I said, there is that mix up between um, you know, what you used to sell and what you kind of have to offer now. How is that going to shift for you and are you okay with that? And a good, good resource to have is maybe asking someone local, like we know Royal Coins and Blake, what do they pay for certain things? How can we be on their list in case we need to sell something to them? What would they pay for something? A lot of those things would really help us out personally, but you guys have a lot of coin people in your area as well. And so a lot of great points from here. I know that he is paying around $500 uh, a month to have his office space. So that may vary between different, uh, different cities, but that's a very norm nominal charge. Um, this, I replied, that makes a lot of sense, David. Just had to have a change in the way things roll. Uh, let's skip down a little bit. What would you say is a good number in terms of financials before walking into a physical location? So I asked him a question, but I didn't really be specific. I asked him how much money did he take into his business when he opened an office? Do you come in with $100,000, $150,000, $250,000? That was important to me, but he didn't really answer it that way, which is okay. He says that really depends on the space you're going for. For me, I have a nice office that runs me up about $500 a month, including internet. Uh, it's, a ni it's in the nicest part of town, highest income area of town. It's not very large in terms of its square footage though. I have two small safes in there and I keep my coins in boxes so I don't have a display. I could if I wanted to but would obviously be very cramped. Obviously how you want to set it up is going to determine the kind of space that you need and how much money you're going to spend. For me, I just wanted a small place for now to establish my business and make connections and hopefully grow it to a full blown storefront. Also obviously good security system is important. For bullion, the financial commitment based on your uh, customer base. Uh, when you're starting out, you probably don't need a whole lot of bullion on hand, but as customers start walking in expecting to buy stuff, you're want, going to want um, at least have a couple hundred ounces. So a few things here that I really picked up on. Um, are you, do you have a good security system? What kind of benefits are offered at the place that you would want to rent out if you wanted an office? Um, do you, can you move safes in there? Um, is it able for you to do that? Um, will they be protected? All these things you really should ask yourself and search and see if you have the financial funds to assist with that. Um, another thing that uh, he was really good about is that starting small. So starting small is important because it's a growing pain. I know that people that wanted to get into the bullion or the coin space and they said, I like bullion and coins and I'm gonna open a storefront in a month, right? So that kind of jump scares me because there's so many nuances to being local and that transfer from online and so um, what I would say is small steps and that's kind of what I like about David that's kind of why I wanted to share it with you and David's doing a lot of cool things um, the last thing that he really touched on was just having uh, like there's a, a constant change that's going to be happening over time with your business and an office from what it appears like he says at, at first you don't really need that many ounces of silver and gold but over time people are going to come in and expect them from you because you are getting that word of mouth but you are also getting you know, those constant customers that come back and that really enjoy bullion. Um, he went on to say, uh, of silver and a few ounces of gold in hand, and with that stuff, it's really important to build wholesale relationships with other dealers to where you can just call them up and order some if you need to fill an order. So uh, another good question for you is, do you have wholesalers' phone numbers? Are you in contact with them? Do you do business with them? Um, because there's going to be a day when you don't have enough bullion or there's going to be a day you don't have enough coins and they're going to be asking and, and wanting that, right? And, and that ultimately leads to, are you going to maintain people's interest? And the way that you do that is that if you have the inventory that you need 
and also um, are you willing to be there to fill their order? Uh, the last thing he wanted to talk about was uh, maintaining store hours. So he said, finally, I know it's uh, you and your brother, unlike me, this one man show, but maintaining hours of operation is important. It hurts me that the office is closed when I'm out at a show. I just have to be very good at communicating that point and emphasize it to anybody that calls me that, uh, that I'll be back open after I return home from the show. So it's important that he said this because I've been to a lot of coin shops, like probably half of them, maybe more than that, where you show up and they're not even there. And you just kind of scratch your head and it's a really unfortunate thing. But if you are committed to being a coin dealer, committed to uh, growing a brand, a lot of that has to do with showing up, being consistent, having great coins, having uh, bullion on hand. And so uh, David really did well with explaining this to me and I really wanted to share it with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I know it's uh, nothing that's you know showing you guys a coin or uh, something that is super exciting, but I do think that if you are a coin dealer or want to be a coin dealer one, one day, there are next steps. There are people out there that want to help you. David's a great guy. Like I said, follow Black Eagle Coins on Instagram. But uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts. If you have any additional questions you should ask uh, yourself or you want to ask somebody else, uh, our comment section is always filled with people that want to talk and communicate. And uh, we will see you guys in uh, the next video.